In the previous video, I talked very briefly about what Ops Manager is and a bit about what I plan to cover in other videos. So in this video, I do want to take a closer look at some of the various components that make up Ops Manager because there's a lot of different roles and servers and parts to Ops Manager and it's easy to get lost in all of the new stuff that Ops Manager throws at you. So if you're new to Operations Manager, then I'd definitely recommend that you watch this video. But if you're quite proficient with Ops Manager, then a lot of this is going to be stuff you probably already know. So feel free to skip ahead to the next video. Right, so we already know that Operations Manager is a monitoring tool, a program that's designed to watch over your servers and networks and applications and report back any problems you might be having or capture enough data that over time you might be able to potentially predict problems before they happen. And that's obviously an important but often overlooked area of a lot of monitoring regimes. Unfortunately, where monitoring is concerned, many people just drop a monitoring program into their environment and expect it to solve all their problems immediately. But without any real thorough planning, you're going to get very little out of any monitoring program. In fact, you're probably just going to be annoyed at all of the noise that it produces. It's going to identify a lot of events that you might not even be interested in. So with these sorts of programs, you get out what you put in, just like most things in life. So if you do put the time into Ops Manager, then it's going to reward you back with some genuinely useful information. So I guess that brings me to my first question, why use Ops Manager? Well, the answer to that question is going to depend on your commitment to working with Operations Manager. Again, if you want a quick installation and let it go type product, then you're really looking in the wrong area. In fact, you're kidding yourself and you're unlikely to find any monitoring product that does that very well. Your answer really should be that you want to be proactive in managing your systems. You want to make them better. You want to meet your SLAs. You want to get some sleep at night and so on. Basically, the role of monitoring is to help you get onto those problems right away, have you be notified of those problems before screaming users get on the phone to tell you about them, and hopefully even prevent those problems before they occur. I guess that's the real goal here, preventing problems before they occur. But in cases where that's not possible, at least know about those problems immediately so you can get things working again in the shortest time possible. Well, since you're here listening to me, I'll assume that you've already purchased Ops Manager, or at the very least you're thinking about it, and you want to see how it all works. So let's take a look at the components of Ops Manager. Now, obviously, the very first thing Operations Manager needs is a server to put it on. Now, technically, you can get away with a single server for Ops Manager, and in a small company, that's okay. If hardware is an issue, put it all on one server, and if you're building a lab to play around in and learn Ops Manager, then a single server is fine. Now, in a medium to large company, though, you're likely to want to put some of those roles within Ops Manager on their own separate servers, especially the databases, because they can get hit rather hard. All right, so let's talk about these roles. Well, the very first server, or the main server, if you like, that you're going to install as an Ops Manager administrator is a management server. Now, back in Operations Manager 2007, we had the concept of a root management server, or an RMS. Now this RMS server was the first server that's installed in a management group, something we'll talk about later on. So when you're sitting at your desk here and you want to log on to the Operations Manager console to work with Ops Manager, you'll be logging into this RMS server via a service called the Data Access Service, or DAS, or in fact the SDK service as it was known back in 2007. Now we're going to use this console to find out what's happening in our network, to see the states of our servers, to view any alerts, to run our reports, and all that kind of cool stuff. So this is the console where we'll be doing a lot of our work as an Ops Manager Administrator. Now in SCOM 2016, just like it was in 2012 as well, the RMS server's role is a little different. In fact, it doesn't actually exist like it did back in 2007. But instead, to provide backwards compatibility for some old management packs that require the use of an RMS, Microsoft have introduced a role we really call the RMS emulator role. So when we install the first management server, which we'll do really soon in an upcoming video, it's going to be by default the RMS emulator as well. But if we choose to add in more management servers, which we're going to do, this role could be transferred to another server if we like. So our management servers are the brains of the operation, if you like, and as you might expect, there's a bunch of supporting roles to this management server, not least of which is that it needs some kind of database to store all the data that we're going to capture. 
Now this database is called the Operations Database. Now for this database, we're gonna use Microsoft SQL Server and it can be installed on the same server as our management server or it can be installed on a totally separate server, which I will add right now early on that if you can separate each of these roles out to their own server, then obviously that's the preferred way of doing it. So we'll make our management server and we'll have our database server on totally separate machines and you're going to get much better performance. So this operations database is going to be part of a management group and the information that it gathers from our agents around our network is going to be kept here for seven days by default. And the whole idea of this operations database is that it's kept small and fast so it can get good performance and keep up with all the updates that it can get, especially in a large network. This database can get hit pretty hard. Now we'll also install another database called the Data Warehouse, and we'll store information for much longer periods in that database, uh, up to 400 days by default for some of our hourly and daily summary information. So seven days might not seem like a lot for our smaller operational database, but this data will also be kept on our Data Warehouse server for much longer term storage. Okay, so we've got the brains, I've got our management server, we've got databases to store the data that our management server discovers, and we've got our user over here, looking into the console to view that data from their workstations. So how do we actually get the data in the first place? Well, we'll do that by deploying an agent to the devices we wish to monitor. So an agent is basically just a little piece of software that will deploy to a client machine and it will be used to monitor that device and report back on the status of that device. We can distribute this agent to machines remotely and have it report back on what it's up to. So how it's tracking with the various components on that device. So for example, we could use this agent to monitor performance levels on a server, how much disk space it's got, whether certain services are running, its general health and so forth. And then when conditions on this agent match conditions that we're looking for, then we can be alerted. So for example, if we've configured a monitor to tell us if the hard disk space on this agent drops below one gig of free space, then it could notify you via the operations console to view those alerts. The thing with monitoring is there's thousands of different things you could normally choose to monitor, but it really only comes down to a couple of things. What do you want to monitor? And is there a monitor or a rule created for that thing that you want to monitor? Now, if the answer is no, and there's not a monitor already written, well, maybe you could write your own. And that's the thing with SCOM monitoring. You could never really say no that something is not possible. There always seems to be a way of monitoring things. At least in my experience, I've always found there's a way. Now, there might be some Windows servers that you won't be able to install an agent on, though, or maybe you're not allowed to because of company policy. So these sorts of devices could fall under a different category that would call agentless devices. Now this does have a downside that it puts an extra overhead on our management servers, but it does still mean that we still can monitor those devices. And if you're coming from a third party product like Tivoli perhaps, you'll be glad that Ops Manager isn't just a Windows thing, we can use it to monitor basically any device. And yes, SCOM supports monitoring of network devices and of course Unix and Linux as well. So speaking of monitors, in Operations Manager, the monitors themselves come packaged in the form of management packs. So at this point, we've been talking about having various components. We've got our management servers, if you like, the brains of our uh, network. We've got our databases to store the information that's gathered from our network. And we have our agents around our network that are responsible for grabbing the information we're looking for. But right now, they're just sitting there awaiting instructions on what information they need to gather. And those instructions come in the form of management packs. So some management packs are rather general in what they look for and might monitor various aspects of your system like CPU usage, disk usage, memory usage, and things like that. Uh, other management packs are very, very specific and might monitor only SQL Server or Exchange or some other third-party application. So if you're on the fence right now and you're looking at Ops Manager as something you might introduce into your own network, then I'd encourage you to look at what management packs are available for the things that you wish to monitor. Now you'll most likely find that there are already management packs out there for your own hardware and software. But if you've got the resources or the desire to learn, which I assume you do or you probably wouldn't be listening to me right now, custom management packs can always be written. Now we will be talking about management packs in great detail later on, so it is a pretty important part of Ops Manager. 
All right, so we've gone through about five, I'll call them required components for any ops manager deployment. Our management server, the operations database, the data warehouse, the agents, and now the management packs. And there's also some other components that we don't have to install. Some of them are optional, but some of them are something you probably will want to install. So let's have a talk about what they are. Well, firstly, uh, I've put down here another management server. And the reason I've done that is if you have a large environment, you might find you need to deploy more than one management server. So this is basically the same server as our first management server. We're just going to install an additional one to help with performance or to help with the load. If we've got more devices, then we can possibly manage using any one server. Now, having an additional management server also helps out with other activities like group calculations, something we might talk about in a later video, and it allows us to configure resource pools, something which was introduced back in SCOM 2012, and something we'll probably cover later on as well. Now, next, we've got a web console server, and we use a web console server to help manage our ops manager infrastructure from a web page. Now, that could be useful to give links to the Ops Manager console for alerts so maybe your support staff that might not necessarily use Ops Manager itself, but still want to get in and have a look at the alerting it provides. So you could, for example, email a person a link that will open the web console directly to the alert they might need to attend to. Now, one thing I didn't add to this list here, and I'm kicking myself for not doing it, uh, as with Ops Manager 2007 and 2012, in Ops Manager 2016, we've now got support or more support for Windows PowerShell to help us manage Operations Manager. Now, if you're not really familiar with Windows PowerShell, I'd strongly encourage you to learn it. I really can't emphasize that enough. You have to learn Windows PowerShell. There, I said it. And I'm going to keep saying it throughout these videos. And again, I'm going to try and show you the GUI way of performing a task and wherever possible, the PowerShell way too. And if you visit my blog, you're going to see I tend to put a fair bit of PowerShell in there as well. Now, another component of Ops Manager 2016 is the gateway server. And a gateway server is used when we want to monitor devices that are behind firewalls or in untrusted networks like a DMZ or a server that's not part of your forest. We could deploy a gateway server behind the firewall so it's able to monitor devices on the other side. And then it can communicate back to the management server what's happening in that other network. Now, this is obviously not a required role. You still can monitor regular agents in an untrusted network, but it will require the use of certificates on each agent. Now, this can be a pretty complex subject for some people, but I'm going to do my best to demystify this subject in another video. Now, Audit Collection Services is another role you can install, and its job is to go out into the network, collect security logs from remote computers. Now, Windows itself is pretty good in that it logs a lot of information into the various event logs placed on a system but those logs are decentralized, or in other words, they're all over the place, stored on each server, and not in a central database where they could be for easy access and reporting. So this audit collection service does exactly that. It grabs the security logs from those machines, stores them in a central database where you can actually use them and report on them, rather than just leaving them out there on each server, mostly going unnoticed, unless there's an obvious security breach. So if you do make use of auditing on Windows, you might want to install this feature and centralize those logs. Agentless exception monitoring, this is another feature of Ops Manager that's worth looking into because it allows you to collect all of the error reports on a Windows system. Now, the more seasoned of you listening you might remember those as the old Dr. Watson errors. So this agentless exception monitoring can go out, collect all of those crash dumps, and bring them back into a centralized database so you can analyze them. So whether we're talking about audit collection services, or agentless exception monitoring, there are three parts to each of those. They have a forwarder, a collector, and the database. Now, the good news is, if you decide to use these features, you don't actually have to install a forwarder, since it's part of the agent itself. But it just isn't activated on the agents by default. So all we need to do is configure our collector and the database, and then these forwarders are magically going to spring into life. So this is a pretty cool feature, probably one you're not going to turn on for your workstations, but maybe for your domain controllers and other critical servers, sure. That's a real possibility. Now, the next component I want to talk about are management groups. Now, in a lot of cases, you're only ever going to have a single management group. So think of all the servers that make up Ops Manager as a management group, kind of like a, a domain, if you like. Now, in cases where you might like to separate out the administrative roles for various groups of computers, you could use additional management groups for that. Now, we can even get more in-depth by creating what's known as multi-homed agents on a computer and have members of different management groups manage different parts of that computer. For example, you could have one management group managing SQL Server on a particular server, but another management group could be responsible for, 
IIS that's running on the same computer. Now, that's not a likely scenario admittedly, but it's certainly possible. Now the final optional component, but one that we are definitely going to be installing here, is the reporting server, which I did mention earlier in this video. Now with the reporting server, this is just a database that will be where we go to generate reports. Reports that detail what's going on within our network. Now this role can be installed onto your existing database server if you like, and that will largely depend on the size of your network and whether you can spare the additional hardware. But you will want to install this role since that's one of the things that all monitoring deployments need, reports. Management want reports and you need to deliver them. So that's always going to be the case. So we will be installing a reporting server. Okay, look, in this video, I've talked a little bit about some of the various components you're gonna find in an Ops Manager environment. A lot of these components, of course, we're going to install and work with during these videos. Some of them are optional, but you wanna give some thought to which components you really need. Now, obviously, at the very least, we're gonna need a single management server, we're gonna need a database server to host our operational database, our data warehouse, and our reporting database. We're gonna need some agents, and of course, some management packs. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'd like to thank you for watching.